Bible doesn't teach that. So even loving the truth is so important. The ninth commandment for out of the heart proceeds thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. That's in the New Testament. Okay. Well, this I think is important. I talked to you about the fact that you actually could defame somebody's character. We don't take this one all that important. We don't listen to this one very much. Because it's easier when nobody's listening to call somebody a you know, fool. I say unto you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, or thou fool, or Raka is like conceited one, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. How many of you ever have heard of verbal abuse? Verbal abuse? Emotional abuse? When somebody tells a young promising person, you're just stupid. You're never going to make much of yourself. You think you're going to be somebody? Oh, Jesus says, whoever says stuff like that is in danger of hellfire. Because those kinds of comments could really change the course of somebody's life. And they need healing after that kind of abuse. Raka, empty one that is a worthless. So the principles, deep principles in the ninth commandment about not bearing false witness at least show these, that he is the truth. You know, we're believers. When, when you believe something, it's because it's got to be true to believe it, right? You want to only believe the truth. Amen. So we're believers, so we want to have truth among us. And God cares what we say about others' character. So those are at least some of the principles. And the very last one, I don't think any of the other ones would be broken if this wasn't the last one. But Exodus 20, uh, if this last one was always kept, is what I mean. If you start, if you start by breaking this one, thou shalt covet. You will always, uh, most people would proceed into all the other breaking all the other commandments. Uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid ser man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. And in Exodus 20, 17, another way of saying it: Do not desire another man's house. Don't desire his wife, his slaves his cattle, his donkeys, or anything else that he owns. Notice in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6, it's talking about the people in the Old Testament that, that they wanted stuff that God didn't think was good for them at the time. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. You know, they overate all those uh, partridges, quail, that came, they just over ate, and they wanted that when God was cleaning up their system, had them on a plant-based diet. Manna. Anyway, Micah 2.12 2, 2, 2 says, and they cut the fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his heritage, even a man in his, a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. So, there's many examples, and uh, the biggest one would be Nadab, 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 the one that wanted the field, and Ahab took it away. Yeah. Ahab wanted it, and he coveted it and killed a man over it. So the, the end of this 10th commandment, but 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, but godliness with what? Yeah. Contentment is great gain. You know, the Lord showed me there's always going to be somebody that on this ladder that's got more than you have. And there's always going to be somebody that has not as much as you have. Like forever, until heaven. And so, godliness with contentment is great gain. Finding that what you have and what you can do with what you have is great gain. Wow, you've already gotten more than you deserve. Well, that went right off the screen, Marty. I think I'm out of my, out of my, yeah. So 
So the principles of this are, would you look on your paper for the 10th, number 10? Tell me what are the principles of the last one? Contentment, gratitude, and praise. So if you have, if you're not a coveter, you're going to have contentment. And when you start being thankful for what you've got, you're going to have a praise. Amen? So instead of griping and moaning and moaning and murmuring like the children of Israel did, and do you know murmuring was like really bad? God, when he heard a murmuring, that's when he would say, I heard you murmuring. So thank you, Marty. These things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. They coveted the fields, godliness and contentment. But there's something we're supposed to covet. Did you know that? New Testament teaches there's something we're supposed to covet. And it's in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 31. And it says, but earnestly covet, or covet earnestly, the best gifts. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. And that is going to be, it's going to be love. And so we could go in and we could do 1 Corinthians 13, but he says love. So there's goods, and he says, brethren, covet to prophesy, forbid not to speak with tongues, and love in chapter 13 is what it's all about. Thank you for reading that contentment, gratitude, and praise. That's where we wanted to end up. But we have to not have a stubborn heart. That's the biggest deal. If we hear what God's wanting us to do, we don't want a stubborn heart. And here's where he says it. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. So this safety equipment that God has given us is so that it might be well with us and with our children forever. Amen? Amen. So the Ten Commandments are actually ten promises. Amen. And those ten promises are going to give us the victory. So if you would ignore what's in your hymn, uh, in your, um, your bulletin and turn to number 608, we'd love to have us all stand up and sing, Faith is the victory. And we'll have a closing prayer. And camp along the hills of the mighty Christian soldiers rise.
that you <clears throat> will realize and take into your heart that God is love, the character of God is love, and it's definitely reflected in His Ten Commandments. And you can believe that? Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Shall we bow our heads? Hallelujah, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne, needing you, needing you to write your law in our hearts, because your law is the law of liberty, your law is the law of love, and you promised that if we give our hearts to you, you will give us your heart. Hallelujah, Father, we ask that you would Bless each and every one that's standing here now. And if you, now I'm talking to those of us that are here in the, in the church, in the auditorium. If you would like to have God write his law in your heart, that you may understand that each one of them is a law of love. And how to love God even more. Would you just raise your hand while the eyes are closed. Nobody's looking. If you want God to write his law in your heart that you might know him as the God of love. Please raise your hand. Father in heaven, you see the hands that are raised. You see the hearts that are open to you. And you may put your hand down now. And Lord, we ask that you, in your mercy, would grant us regeneration. Grant us the gift of being born again. That we might see the kingdom of heaven like a little child. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And that you said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.